I, is it going to be busy now? Are they going to be like, this is the Affleck dunks? I, I don't think so. I think I think most people have the sensibility to realize that Ben Affleck is not going to be working full time at, at a Medford Dunkin' Donuts. I'm talking no, but I'm talking about like a uh, it's like a landmark. Brunch, hit it, boys. Gee, my brother in Christ. Oh, I gotta get the sticker. There's always a sticker on the bottom of them. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, brother. I'm not gonna lie. Those are kind of sick. <laughs> Hold on. All right. A little snug. Very comfortable. Um, no free feet picks on this show. Oh my god, you guys are sick. Oh, brother. Welcome to brunch, everybody. Welcome. Another, uh, another epi. Sorry, just putting on the old uh, podcast shoes. You're the fucking worst. <laughs> so last week we uh, we wrapped the episode. DJ left. By the way, we record this show in in my house, in my my office. Um, DJ left left the residence, left the studio. Went back to his residence where he lives with all his stuff, and I happened to notice there were a pair of shoes left in the studio. And so I texted DJ and I said, uh, hey, by any chance, did you leave a pair of shoes at the studio? And his response was, sure did. Those are my podcast shoes. As you say this, it makes even more sense than it initially did. <laughs> it it doesn't because podcast shoes are not a thing. And uh, you don't just get to leave your things at other people's houses. Uh, I mean, without getting into the you don't just get to leave your things at other people's houses thing. That is just obviously incorrect. Depending on your relationship with that person, I think it's very common to leave things. Well, there's usually, a, there's usually a conversation that precedes it. There's usually a, hey, is it cool if I keep my stuff here? We've known each other for I will long say, enough. Like, like, we've, we've had many conversations, many of them in the sensitive past, in I, nature and, yeah. and, uh, and like awkward, difficult conversations that we've had in the past. There's, there's absolutely no reason why there would be a, a hesitancy to, um, to be like, hey, you mind if I leave my shoes here for podcast purposes? Yeah, I mean, I'm realizing as you say this that I'm recycling a bit because like a million years ago, I for sure used to do that. I would like leave a toothbrush with uh, the person I, I was seeing and it was just accidentally because like they had an extra toothbrush, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, so you're just leaving a toothbrush out like you're leaving toothbrushes here. So then I would just like always like leave toothbrushes and they'd be like, don't leave a toothbrush. Like that's not what this is. I'd be like, Totally. <laughs> Completely get it. And then I just keep leaving. Just uh, leaving a 12 pack of toothbrushes in your car and bringing one in every time. Pop it. Yeah. <laughs> Kobe. <laughs> Didn't even have a sexual relationship with this person. It was just purely platonic. Just, yeah. This was a family member. <laughs> Visiting a friend a of a friend. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I really have to pee. Can just I use your bathroom for a second? <laughs> bah. Podcast. Just shoes. written on it. DJ. In yeah. the left end. Yeah. Podcast toothbrush. Uh, Marking your territory. 
Yeah, uh, but, but there was uh, very clearly I was like, all right, this is content because people you uh, did you tweet it? Yeah, I, I, I was like, you, so you said this, I, is I said this is content. That yeah. sounds more. Yes, correct. Um, but, but people weighed in. I'm saying he's like, I was getting text messages, uh, both strongly for and strongly against. Yeah. yeah, same. I got I got a mixed bag and um, it, it carried over like outside of Twitter where it was like. There are there are off offline conversations about quote unquote podcast shoes. Yeah, um, the first thing I did once this all started happening was for sure I'm wearing the beginning of this episode was me uh, opening a new box of shoes. I sent more podcast shoes to yeah, Pete's that, house. That's the thing. <laughs> you for sure. You I I do appreciate the move of sending the podcast the new podcast shoes to my house in your name. Yes, and you know what? I mean, there's a few reasons why that's good. A, as Spike's, so Spike is anti podcast shoes. I, I'm like, he's I, team I'm, Pete on this. So I'm not anti podcast shoes. I had to kind of like clarify that on Twitter, where somebody was like, uh, "Well, like n- number one, never wear shoes in the house." Um, so that that's also where you you're you're also I'm okay. of that ilk. No, n- oh, no, okay. no, no, no. Like, if the shoes have never been outside, feel free to wear them in the house. Right. That's what podcast shoes are. That, so I, I I defended the idea of like studio shoes. Yes. Because I know that you don't want your feet to be on camera, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and as a TV person, TV shoes and studio TV studio shoes it, are a thing. So that's why I, I, sim- these shoes are simply – famously, I used to be on TV. And uh, I love – by the way, it's only been like – Eight days, I but I have to be. strongly leaned into like I had a TV chapter of my life. Like I'm talking to TV places, they're you're like, "Hey, you want to come to TV like for still us?" In syndication. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm still figuring things out. So anyway, <laughs> back when I used to do TV, um, yeah, the the studio shoe thing, as you said, is a thing, and I love it. I love that you can just kind of roll in. Yeah, but and- nobody lives at the TV studio. <laughs> Uh, there's that's that's a Tom important. Childs works a lot of hours over there. <laughs> he does not sleep there. It is not his personal space. He showers there. Yeah, but that's fine. He I used to shower at the old studio. I shower at places that I don't live. Interesting. Gyms, other yeah. houses. I used to shower at the gym. I don't shower at the gym anymore. I live so close to the gym. It's stupid for me to shower at the, at the gym. I I've actually five, been. Five uh, minutes I, I've been going to the gym less frequently over the year. Devotees of uh, looking at my body will know that uh, I go to the gym <laughs> less. Than... Devotees of looking at my body. <laughs> well, they they know that I don't go to the gym as often as I used to. But uh, even when I was in my gym heyday, uh, I didn't mind not showering at the gym. Just put a towel in the car, ride home. And I don't even sweat that much. We're gonna Bring ta- a change of clothes. Oh, yeah, you're not a cardio guy. Yeah, I know. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, car appearances coming up because uh, I dodged a major bullet with not meeting a uh, seminal member of uh, brunch history today. And I would have seen this person in a drive through in oh, my car. Yes. And God knows what I would have been wearing. And to the people who have reached out saying, hey... Isn't that where you live? Blah, blah, blah. We'll talk about it in a few minutes, but I am okay and honestly glad to have avoided I'm the whole I am heartbroken. Thing. Yeah, I get why you're sad about it. But uh, So I ordered uh, more podcast shoes uh, to your house immediately. Don't have a job. Don't have income. Uh, the, the, these were not on sale. And I was in such a rush to get them. I was like, they have to get there by the time of the next show. I didn't even shop around or click around. They were like the first shoes that were They're on. They're very you. And they had to be from Foot Locker because if they were from Amazon, it would just be some package. And you'd be like, oh, did you maybe send some equipment here or something? And you wouldn't care. It needed to be you getting a package from Foot Locker. Oh, so you wanted me to, to know. David, yes, I wanted you to <laughs> say that motherfucker I, and well, like tweet a picture of the package and accidentally give out your address <laughs> and then people would send me shoes. I mean, it did work in your favor. I, it came today before we were recording the episode. I texted you as, hey, you just got a package addressed to you at my house. And I looked closer and, I, and I, it said like, Something that wasn't Foot Locker, and then underneath it said Foot Locker Drive. And I was like, oh, what the motherfucker. I believe you said this had better not be a <laughs> podcast shoes thing. And I waited two minutes and casually responded, 
yeah, those are podcast <laughs> shoes. And then you didn't, didn't respond, respond for, for like, like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Which, um, and responded to like other uh, group the, the, texts. I, I did love that move. You stayed active in group texts so I could see that. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> I'm by the phone for sure. Um, it's been a real dilemma because people have asked if they can send podcast shoes here. And I brought this up in a... Let me tell you what. This place is now becoming a shoe barn. There are so many shoes here already. And that's another thing. Like, don't even I, say I don't what I think th- you're going to say. I don't think that I'm being unreasonable with my requests. And one of my requests was put your podcast shoes with the other shoes. Absolutely. Okay. I'm glad that that has come up. Because that defeats the whole purpose. No, it doesn't. I'm not, because the, whole the other is- shoes are around like dirty mats and there's salt. And I know, please, believe you me, <laughs> I have had areas for shoes before. Not to brag, I live in an apartment and I have an area where the shoes go. And you of know course. what I do when I take off my shoes? I just fucking throw them at the other shoes. I see a, a collection of shoes and I throw them one by one overhand at those shoes. And it's a big mess I'll of shit. I'll tell you what. That's the difference between you and me. Nobody's throwing their shoes in this house. But if you were to take a picture of the shoe area, it will look a little unkempt. Yes, correct. And those shoes are probably touching each other. My uh, The original podcast shoes are white. I will give you a dedicated space for your podcast shoes that will not be encroached upon or touched by other shoes. If you give me a dedicated space... I will with, give you a VIP spot on my shoe rack in the front of the house. It needs a separate rack with five walls <laughs> left right top bottom and back the front may be exposed but we're not doing some cubby shit where they're going to get smushed or we're not doing something where it's going to share a room well, here's with the, another pair of shoes the easy solution which will t- satisfy both of our needs oh please tell me because i want the solution to <laughs> get a podcast bag oh oh my god a Gross. podcast bag no. in which you can put your podcast shoes and take them to and fro there is a podcast shoe rack that's going to go right here. <laughs> we are redoing the studio that has been set in motion. Um, the the it's getting like it's getting started very soon. So good. This whole studio is going to look awesome, and it's there's going to be some space freed up. Maybe we can find a uh, a podcast shoe dedicated space. I feel like that would be functional art to have an area where all the shoes because i'll tell you what i think there's gonna be some I, shelving back here if we just put our sh- our sh- our podcast shoes on the shelves not a, nice a bad idea joke. but i'll tell and you like we can do it like mr rogers at the beginning of every episode we mm-hmm. take them off the shelf and put them on our on our feet there is a list a mile long of people who want to send me shoes <laughs> to this home and i won't give it out and i was i'm, I'm thought about it but I just know how mad I would be if, like, anybody, for any reason, gave out... Like, I'm weird with, like, privacy and stuff. But, like, if you just casually gave out my Your address, address yeah. I'd no, yeah, be don't really do that. mad. Yeah. And I so I understand, like, why you can't do that. So I was venting that I was like, this would all be a lot easier if I could just give out Pete's address. <laughs> and a friend of the podcast uh, reminded me that... Their boss during quarantine, who is a very famous person, just gave out his address uh, so he could do unboxing videos. Oh, true. And for some reason, this person who there's a lot of people who want this person dead. That's an, um, that's, an had, ap- that's an apartment, though. Like that, that's a building with a security guard and like layers of security. True. You're right. And other people like like you have loved ones that you wouldn't want to get mixed up yes. in like the podcast shoe game. And that's really why I was like, I feel like Pete might not even be that mad. I don't want to give out like Devin's address, <laughs> yeah. you know, he's famously got people after him. No, like, I just feel like I'm like, well, once like the, like, Hey, like a child lives there. And then it's like, okay, you, 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 the, the podcast shoe game can only go so far, but there's probably going to be a way that people are going to get new shoes, more shoes to this place. There's also like, I mean, it's scary, but like you, it's so easy to find somebody's address on the internet. I, yeah, I don't even. Yeah, that that weirds me out. I did like a Google search one time. It's like a white page myself, thing, and you should find somebody's address. And it was like it was all pretty dated, but it had some like semi accurate guesses as to like a lot of things. And I was like, how can that be? 
Yeah, and I uh, one of my friends just moved into an area in Massachusetts and like knew of a famous person that was from that town. Yeah, and just like Googled it and like did a, like a tiny bit of research and then just like found out where their childhood home was, where like their parents lived. Wow, and it's just like it's shit. That shit is fucking terrifying. Are these shoes that good? I know I I wore red so- I've socks with them and I feel like they look bad with the red socks. But no, uh, I mean like they're 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 more or less slippers. Yeah, they're like slippery. They're like boots. sneaker slippers. Yeah, but they've got the. Yeah, I mean these. They've uh, got structure. Like those aren't like. Those aren't yeah, your, those aren't your daddy slippers. Honestly, I probably should have gone a size up. Can I send back podcast shoes? Just lightly worn podcast shoes. I mean, if I'm only wearing them. Oh, just send back a note only worn for one episode one thing that annoyed me i don't know why i was offended by this uh there were a couple of people who were like damn deej just leaving your size sixes at pete's <laughs> i have a very respectable shoe size we i'm not getting We've into gone, personal gone information into this. but oh yeah have we, we shared we've, with we've done like a whole thing where you bragged about like having bigger feet i feel like that was a better call saul review we did probably yeah i was like okay just so everyone knows obviously i have significantly bigger feet than pete okay <laughs> Jeez, he's got the arms i've got the feet that's always been our dynamic <laughs> uh so that's the update on podcasting shoes it's probably not going to be the end of it on last we forget which uh could for sure be a thing uh we will have um we will have an update, uh, an a pertinent update right after this read. But before we get there, we need to hear from one of our favorite sponsors. Hey, the NHL season's here, and you know what else is here? <laughs> it's fantasy football season. And you know what else is here? What's up? The NFL playoffs. Oh yeah. You know what else is here? What up? Uh, like prestige movies are coming out. Mm-hmm. Megan came they're out. Not- <laughs> We're gonna talk yeah. that in a little bit. Prestige movies aren't coming out. They they're out. Well, they're being, they're like they're out. Being they're being like not by cool us. anymore. <laughs> oh no, no, no! Like they're they're prestige movies are out. We only watch <laughs> Megan, and no matter what we're watching, we're watching with a Vizzy in our hand. That's because right. no matter what you're doing, whether you're seeing friends, family, hanging out, seeing movies in or out, Vizzy Hard Seltzer brings the joyful vibes all year round. You know that whenever I talk Vizzy, I talk the Vizzy mimosas because. Because of the old throat, I don't do mimosas a lot. I stay away from the orange juice. It just messes me up. Tony Soprano, I am not. Sopranos, they drink tons of orange Fizzy. juice. Oh, yeah. But I drink a responsible amount of Vizzy Mimosas because it's got the refreshing taste of real orange juice and is perfect for daytime sipping. It comes in strawberry orange, pineapple orange, peach orange, and pomegranate orange. Want to shake things up or just keep your options open? Try a Vizzy Variety Pack and get flavor options for days. Typically, if I show up somewhere, any sort of nice little event to get together, I go with the Vizzy Variety Pack because you can get that strawberry kiwi, blueberry pomegranate, black cherry lime, pineapple mango. That's Variety Pack 1. What comes in Variety Pack 2? I guess you'll just have to see. Just kidding. It's watermelon, strawberry, (laughs) raspberry, tangerine, papaya passion fruit, and blackberry lemon. Vizzy Hard Seltzer. Flavors for every vibe. Stock up on Busy Hard Seltzer and show some love for the show. Here's how to get yours. Go to busyhardseltzer.com slash washed to find Busy near you. That's busyhardseltzer.com slash washed. And to hear first about latest flavor drops and more, sign up at busyhardseltzer.com slash subscribe. Must be 21. Celebrate responsibly. M- Molson Coors Beverage Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 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 That's how T Payne would give that read. Um, if you're listening to this episode and you listened to last week's episode, by now you're probably wondering, "Hey, where's Cameron Dicker? Where's we the were dick prom- boy? We were yeah. promised a, a, a dick on this episode. Um, we do not have Cameron Dicker on this episode, but we do have an update. Yeah, we tried to get Cameron Dicker. Yes, we reached out to this to the, the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, we did get a response. And I'll read it for you right now. Hey, Pete, appreciate the support of the team and the desire to have Cameron on your podcast. But obviously, getting a text message from someone I don't know on a travel Saturday morning for a podcast I'm not familiar with in week 18 of the season isn't how we handle media requests. 
We're on a short week, and coupled with it being the postseason and our schedule being being tighter than usual, we're limiting one-offs. If you want to email your request and kindly familiarize us with the show and your work, blank handles our player booking. I'm not sure how realistic it is to do this, uh, something like this in season, but at least learning more about you and the show would be a good start. Blank's email is redacted, dot, dot, dot. Thanks. Then also the podcast. That's all. Yeah. That the. the it seems like we've got a good shot of getting Cameron Dicker soon. The the communication lines are open. That's right. So there is an update. There is an update. We are in talks. We are in talks. Uh, it's a very nice response. And I think that we have updated our goal to not only get Cameron Dicker, but get the person that sent that response. First thing I said, I said, I <laughs> uh, got good news and I got bad news. The bad news is... It's a no for now. The good news is found another person want on the old podcast. To be fair, though, um, a lot of the people who have said no to coming on this podcast um, in are, the past. Are you going to make the same exact? I Because I thought about responding and saying, hey, you know who else said no? <laughs> you know who else said no? M- Kevin like, Spacey. Like, aggressively. Kevin Spacey, and you see what happened to that guy. Always said no, though. Not saying that. Not saying that. That never said talk to the hand. <laughs> Always said. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, or his person always busy said right thank now. you, uh, but he's not going to do this. Correct, and I think sometimes it was like, uh, he's a little busy right now, mm. um, which is like the gist of, of that response, but at least in this case, there was time to find out if Cameron was busy, because I know in the past, when we reached out to Kevin Spacey, mm-hmm. we would send an email at like 2.41 p.m., and then we get a response at like 2.43 p.m. and be like, hey, uh, no, Kevin's Kevin's busy. There are certain things where you only ask so you can say, we asked and they said no. There is a, at some point, maybe it'll see the light Decline, of day. Declined for comment. But there is a, an Ariana Grande project that we're <laughs> working on. And part of it was that I had to try to get Ariana Grande for this project. And it was only so we could say, Tried to get Ariana Grande, but she's busy because there's a. I have an email that says, "Thanks for your interest." Ariana is busy, which probably very correct. I very correct. imagine Ariana Grande extremely busy is very very busy. You know who else is busy? Who? Uh, Eric Andre getting busy Eric with Andre a new relationship. Getting busy with Emily Ratajkowski. It's wedding bells for Eric Andre <laughs> and when, Emily Ratajkowski. And, it's you know that this is special it's because you know goals. that this is special because we, uh, like a big staple of this podcast is never being surprised that anybody is dating anybody because uh so many times in the past the the public response is hey can you believe that this person is dating this person it's like yes they're they're like they like each other they're yeah like they like they like each other they're famous they're rich like it's, it's sure like they they it probably works <laughs> I don't think that anybody in the world would have ever bet that Eric Andre would end up dating Emily Ratajkowski. This is the angriest I've been that for some reason I didn't put Tim Heidecker drops on this board (laughs) because we could just say Eric Andre is dating Emily Ratajkowski. Huh? (laughs) It's that's unbelievable. Like even for a podcast that is has made it its thing to never be surprised. Hall of Fame ball, like outrageous. Yeah, good for Eric Andre. And, and like I said that to a bunch of my friends, they're like, "Yeah, dude, he's funny." But it, it, yeah, I I know that he's funny, but like he's gross funny. Like he's a gross out comedian. I don't always find him funny, to be honest. I think that he's a. Fu- I, I I I also don't always think that he's funny, but he. He does some like, ridiculous shit that is very funny. His specials stink, but <laughs> well, some I don't of the think things he's, I don't think he's show, that kind of comedian. Right, yeah. right. Um, the Eric Andre show is very funny. Him going to buy a car is <laughs> yes. one of my favorite videos in the world. I only learned about it like six months ago, and then I sent it to you 500 times. <laughs> I'm going to buy a car today. He's just 10 Uh, feet tall. I don't trust like that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to buy a car today. Yeah, good for it. Honestly, like the biggest accomplishment of that guy's life, including dating Emily Ratajkowski, what a funny video he made. (laughs) He's going to buy a car. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to mention that because it's fucking hilarious Uh, and Congratulations to to the happy couple. Yeah, uh, the happy couple was in Massachusetts today. 
Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. And Ben Affleck was at Dunkin' Donuts. Very close to me. I won't say just how close this is to me because I'm not big on doxing living whereabouts. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can tell you, my home Dunkin' Donuts, my home and, base Dunkin' and, Donuts. And if you're not from Massachusetts, I mean, you probably there's a you, Dunkin' Donuts every five fucking you, feet. Yeah, you probably should know this about Massachusetts, but it's literally not exaggerated how many Dunkin' Donuts there are in Massachusetts. Like each town has five, six at least. I was blown away by just how this works because they showed the picture of him at the drive-through, and immediately my brain went. All right, so they said it's in Medford. I wonder if this is the one near me. And right away, I thought, all right, there's this one near my old apartment. There's the West Medford one. The one near my old apartment and the West Medford one. Neither of those have drive throughs There's the one right by the Fells Way. That has a drive through but it's... It doesn't look like this. Yes, but it doesn't look like this. It doesn't have this building in the background. Blah, blah, blah. And like within 10 seconds, I was like... It was like a job interview thing where they ask, like, how many pay phones do you think there are in uh, New York City? And you have to, like, show your reasoning for how you'd guess something like that. Yeah. I was like, like the, the Dunkin' Donuts mindset that a, a person from Boston has is crazy. Like, within two seconds, I was like, yeah, it was that one. And then later in the day, I went out and I drove past this Dunkin' Donuts and it was closed. There were no cars there. There were two people. There was somebody blocking the entrance in a nice car. And I was like, I, did they get so overwhelmed by having Affleck there? They were like, everybody out. Uh, you, well, I would I would guess. Or that, they're shooting more stuff inside. Uh, no, I would guess that like they they closed for the day because once you find out that Ben Affleck is there, like yes. people probably just fucking flooded that place. I, is it going to be busy now? Are they going to be like, this is the Affleck dunks? I, mean, I don't think so. I think I think most people have the sensibility to realize that Ben Affleck is not going to be working full time at, at a Medford Dunkin' Donuts. I'm talking no, but I'm talking about like a uh, it's like a landmark. I don't think so. Like I'm very happy that I go to that place now. I, I'll tell you what I did. Um, I did Man on the Street for the Winter Classic, and one of my questions that I asked like everybody was, "Hey, uh, Ben Affleck or Matt Damon?" Yeah, most people picked Matt Damon. I know they would. Well, it's. Um, I, I thought that like like maybe five years ago that would have been the case, but like M Matt Damon had his whole uh, saga about about saying the, the hard language. f word, yeah. and I was like, ah, maybe he fell out of favor. He also had like a he also backed crypto, which has not not been received so, well. I I, I yeah. know I know, but like he he hasn't been in a good movie in a while either. I mean, you're mostly upset about downsizing. No, but he hasn't. What was the last good movie he was in? The Martian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was probably it. I wasn't crazy about The Martian. That was like seven years ago. Yeah. Um, but people just said Matt Ben uh, Matt Damon because whether or not they their brain was realizing it, you look like Matt Damon. So no, they were like, not. you just kind of had them in a Matt Damon mood. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, uh, just really put him in a pretzel. This did. Re this did. I. Uh, I mean, have you seen uh, Focus? No. I'm You've never seen Focus? No. I feel Wait, like yes, Feidelberg I have. and I yes, have talked I have. about yes, Focus on this podcast. Yes, I have. That's the Will Smith and Margot Robbie one, right? Yeah. yeah do you yeah, remember yeah. how they tricked the guy yeah. into uh, picking, into betting on number 55 or whatever? They just like- They put sub, fives yeah, everywhere. Yeah, fives everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They, and they, play, they, they say like- uh, That movie Woo sucked. is like the Mandarin word for five. So they play uh, Sympathy for the Devil in the background. So as he's making up his mind, he's going, woo, woo. <laughs> I bet they could have gotten Bub Rub in there. Really, <laughs> really pushed him over the top. Shout out to Bub Rub and Lil Sis. I hope you're doing well out Lil there. Lil Sis, too. Hey, shout out to Aiden's sister because the Chargers are sending Aiden to Jacksonville for the big game. Yeah. And they showed the video of Justin Herbert telling Aiden that he's going to the game and they had his sister there. And that's the way to play it because Aiden has a sister, I guess, like similarly aged. It stinks if like he goes on this whole ride of yeah. being like a social media star, <laughs> and, and like he's just like, well, what about me? Right. So instead, they were like, hey, Aiden and Fam. Lil Sis, yeah, <laughs> Aiden uh, and Lil Sis. Oh, I think she, that's, the new Bub Rub and Lil Sis. Yeah, and and Herbert was great about it. He was like, hey, like, I, I'm so I'm such a big fan of both of you and everything. I, I just thought it was very nice that they yeah. included her. Uh, also, the the elation that kid gets every every time I see those videos. 
the elation that kids that kid gets when he realized the camera's on him and he's like oh hold whatever i'm holding <laughs> it's coming off <laughs> uh speaking of little sisters um i found out this week and it rocked my world uh i've been watching sex lives of college girls on mm, hbo so max I've been done that and um sex well, <laughs> yes, I still haven't done that. that show. Still looking forward to it. Um, I got I got a little note after this, but Just I found out brushes. I found out that um, one of the girls on that show is Timothy Chalamet's sister. Whoa! And did not expect that whatsoever. But um, friend of the podcast, Megan Kelly, mm-hmm. hung out with her after the Winter Classic, and I was I recommended to her and her friends Sex Lives of College Girls, and she was she like was very adamant that I, I, it was creepy that I watched that show, and mainly because it was called Sex Lives of College Girls. Oh, no. And I was like, what? That's ridiculous. It's the name of the show. And please don't listen to the multiple seasons we did on a teacher. Well, that and I was like, uh, it's just because of the name. Like, if, if, you know what? You know what show is 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 like worse in in con in like like content, I guess, than that show. Oh, probably Euphoria. I haven't seen that. Correct, before. which would be called uh, The Sex Lives of High School Girls, ah. which would be even creepier, but everybody watches that show and is cool with it. Wow, yeah. The Sex Life of College Girls, I, by the way, is just like an okay show. Like, I enjoyed the first season of it. Um, second season, not so good, but yeah, it's it's fine. I immediately dismiss. I mean, um, Quentin Tarantino voice. I reject your hypothesis on the you shouldn't watch that show because... It's about younger people. No, and it's not even about. It's just like the the title is. They like think off-putting. like they're like oh like you're trying to get your rocks off watching yeah. like college girls or whatever. No, that's not why. It's a it's a sit, it's a sitcom. Pete does anything. That's not why we do anything. We <laughs> right. Content is the answer. Um, well, I didn't watch that show for content, but it's yo I could. While we're on this detour from the Affleck conversation, uh, I've been watching a show. Rewatching, I should say, called uh, "The Sex Lives of Adults Who Live in Chicago," aka Easy. Oh hell yeah! Been rewatching it, man. Just crushed all Such the Brewery Brother episodes. Watched, I watched both Jake Johnson episodes. I think I told you this. I watched uh, Brewery Brothers recently, um, like all three of them. Three of them, right? Four. Four of them. Yeah. I, th- I thought that I was surprised. There's two. It- there's two in the first season. Then yes, there's one in the second, and then one in the third. Yes. Uh, I cried. Wow! Oh yeah, you told me that, yeah. and I was like, "Support it." I cried watching the. Brewery I accept Brothers your hypothesis, episodes. Quentin Tarantino. And like, voice. and it was like, and it was for like such a such a ridiculous reason. Why? It was um. You just watched it recently. Do you remember when um? What's the older brother's name? Uh, oh the shit! The guy who looks like Alex Ovechkin. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing his uh, spe- when uh, what's his face gives the speech saying, "Oh, and so in- Matt, Matt." So Matt like hides uh hides like the brewery from his very pregnant wife. Yes. And then there's like a big blowout over it. And like they sit down and they have this conversation and she's like, I'm not mad at you for doing it. I'm mad at you for like feeling like you had to hide it from me. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's just like if it's this important to you, I I wanna be I want to share it with you and I want to get in on it with you and I want it to be like a thing that we can share together. And I cried during that scene because I was just like, that's so nice. She's just like very understanding of like what he's passionate about. And like they both just like talked about it and had like a really nice moment. And I just cried (laughs) because of it. I mean, she's, I mean, devotees of listening to me speak. No, uh, Love those episodes. Love Aya Cash. And she, that might be her best scene of that whole run the, in the garage where she goes and she like lays down the law yeah. and even does some like, excuse me, I'm talking. Yeah, to and, Dave Franco. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who Dave Franco is just like, a, not to be like mean, but like he, he basically plays a puppy in. Uh, but he's but he's so good in that show. Like He's, he's awesome. Yeah. 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 Uh, that he he plays like a emotionally immature person so fucking well. <laughs> yes, and uh, the, uh, when Zazie beats, if you haven't watched the That's, show and you're like hearing all this, you're like, how do they make a show I, with I, all I these could, people? I could not have like a stronger recommendation than watching all four episodes of of that. Like, if you don't want to watch the rest of Easy, fine, watch the four Brewery Brothers episodes, and you will you will like demand that they make a full series. I 
texted just that the other day to I can't believe the they haven't done it. and friend of me and friend of you, uh, John Feidelberg. I was like, hey, uh, I don't think we've ever talked about Easy before, which means you probably haven't watched it, but I'm watching uh, the second Jake Johnson episode right now, and it's one of my favorites. Watch those episodes and also these Brewery Brothers ones because, man, they're so good. And I love how the story change it i I love the like the spent grain angle that they make all the beer and the their partners end up seemingly like they're gonna end up being more successful than them because they're they have their shit to get they have better heads on their shoulders and like a better working dynamic right and they communicate better (laughs) when they sit down they talk about that they're like hey like we're not blood relatives so we don't have to do this and we see how these two bozos work uh off each other i don't feel that in this do you not feel that i don't feel that either cool let's proceed it's so good and uh i just followed i looked up whether don't fret is a real person the artist who makes the logo yeah is it is good i don't know though if the person who plays him is real because this person is very secretive this artist okay. so i wonder if they hired an actor to to play him but those episodes are so good when, so when they good. take down the uh garage uh, door and he gives a speech. He's like, "This is our garage, yeah. so we are going to put this g- back up there eventually. Not <laughs> now. <laughs> That's too much work." Which is like the perfect summary of that character. But yeah, but Zazie Beats gives it to him one episode. She's like, "Hey, like you want to stay a kid forever? Yeah. Like this shit's moving, Bucko. Mm-hmm. We got a fucking kid. Oh man, it's such it's such a good show. And the fact that they." The fact that that hasn't been expanded is crazy. I didn't realize that uh, the when I was going to watch the uh, episodes in the third season, they were like they had like a little preamble thing of like it's the final season. Oh, really? of, and I was like, really? That was your fucking plan? Every episode was just a bit, and I haven't rewatched all of them. Like there's an Aubrey Plaza episode mm-hmm. uh, with like Joe Latrulio. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. One, I yeah. wasn't crazy about that one. No. Don't, need, don't need to watch that a million times. But some of them, uh, it is like a very, very good exploration of just like human character. Yeah, uh, and really, it's like just about relationships. Yeah, like, and I, we talked about this a lot with a bet with Better Call Saul. Like, uh, good reason or like a reason to do something versus like a good reason to do something. A lot of times the better call Saul is stuff that Jimmy does, especially with relation to Howard. Like a he reason. has a reason. Yeah. It's not a good reason. No. He should not be doing that sort yeah. of thing. And uh, that comes up. I feel like so much with the, I guess like main couple in the show, you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. The bigger guy. And, yeah. The bigger yeah. guy. And uh, the one that the, they have the, the open relationship, open relationship. Yeah. like so much of what they go, like they, they definitely love each other and like, they're definitely working on their relationship. But I think she says it like a lot of the stuff that she does is like, she finds a reason to do something, but like probably not. Yeah. Like, uh, it seems like it's, she, it seems like that character is very much into like veering off to find out where her boundary is and like to find her bumpers and we'll just keep going until she's like very uncomfortable and then gets pushed back towards the middle. I can't wait to stop recording this podcast. So, uh, actually I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'm on editing duty for this one. So I'll edit this after, but then I'm going to watch some episodes of easy man. Although I've just, I've gone through the brewery brothers ones. Do I just like in the, the final brewery brothers episode, is uh, not one that you want to keep watching. Is that the one where he, get, he keeps, keeps getting, getting arrested? arrested? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, Matt gives it to him when he picks him up the second time. Yeah. He's like, here's what they haven't spoken in like a year. And he's like, here's what's happening. Yeah. I'm hiring you. You're working for me. Blah, blah. blah. And it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with your fucking partner who's busting her up. Oh, man. I love it. I always want... We should get... Uh, I think Evan John Nikit is the uh, name of that actor, the guy who plays Matt. Because everybody else... Um, it's Dave Franco, Zazie Beats, Aya Cash, and all four of them just fucking bring it. Yeah, I mean, all four of them are fantastic at playing the characters that they play. And I uh, I like that even though like uh, the Matt character has his shit together way more than I do... Uh, I just loved the feeling of watching him when they start the illegal brewery in the garage. 
where he just starts throwing his own money at it and everything and like is like doing it the wrong way but it's just like this is going to put a smile on my face honestly it's me buying the podcast shoes, yeah. where it's like yeah. this like and he's got a kid on the way it's like he's he should probably he, he's clearly like doing okay yeah but probably should be like allocating his spending wisely because he's got very important things coming up and, and he's, he's like, like mm, i could have a good time though <laughs> yeah man well, watch those watch yeah those. for sure Very like good. strongest recommend uh the ben affleck thing to stay <laughs> okay. on topic it made me realize and i've actually thought about this a few times like whenever i wa- rewatch a ben affleck movie he is on the extremely short list of actors or celebrities for whom i truly feel something you know yeah like and, and part of it is like you because we talk about him and like his existence is very a uh, big part of like this show, but whether it was like watching the way back and everything and just like, so I have a, I have a, I have like a, uh, like a synopsis on, on Ben Affleck or like an elevator pitch on Ben Affleck, for why he's so important to me. He obviously like there's the local aspect, but what beyond that, like he is like such a rare mix of, being an everyman and just like this gigantic, gigantic superstar. Yeah. Like where if you if I ever like saw Ben Affleck in person, I don't know like which which way would kind of like overcome me more where it's just like that's just like a regular guy. But then it's also that's also fucking Ben Affleck. Exactly. Like I, so I am very glad I did not decide to go get coffee at dunks this morning and hit the drive through because I truly don't know what I would say, how I would feel. Or like I would very much be overcome by, and I mean, uh, name the per, like if I bumped into like Danielle Heim walking down the street or whatever, I'd be like, no fucking way. And she'd be like, yeah, I talked to Alana, know who you are, whatever. <laughs> we maybe have a nice like exchange or whatever. Like I, I feel like I could, uh, I'd be able to hang for a minute. You, you with know, like, you know the approach. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think Everybody's that I would know. Human. I don't think I would know the approach for Ben Affleck. That's exactly it. And he's the only person that I could think of, like celebrity wise, that I feel like it would be like with that. Even like if I if I bumped into Josh Tillman or something, I'd probably you could connect over music, ignore like him or something, but or like try to leave him alone. But uh, with Ben Affleck, it's exactly what you said. Like, what's going to hit me? And he's also like. Uh, so he's the famous person who probably did want it, but doesn't always seem like it's what he wants. So I don't he, he know. Pro- he probably wanted it a long time ago. And now it's just like, and he likes some of the trappings of it. And yeah. like, he wouldn't have met his wife uh, were it not for, he probably wouldn't have a, a double diet Coke diet Pepsi machine in his office. Exactly. Like the, the, these are the trappings <laughs> of being Ben Affleck. So I don't know what I would say. I, I, I hate to think that maybe because of you, my first thought would be like, I'm so sorry. I have to get a picture. And that would be all it would be because I feel legitimate. Like I am proud of Ben Affleck. Like I'm, yes. I'm very, very happy for Ben Affleck. So what am I, am I saying? Hey, I would probably say you mean a lot to me. And if that sounds weird, we only have one second, but like, <laughs> I love everything you do. And then I'd be like, oh, God, I said I love everything you do or whatever. But truly, like, I'm very, very happy that I it would, it's not to, like it, coddle him, but like, that, that he's down, OK. And that, it boils down to like, I am so happy you exist. Y- yes. Yes. <laughs> and I'm glad you're thriving. And maybe uh, maybe maybe he feels he's not thriving. Yeah, that's you know? the thing. That's like you don't you can't you can't say that. To it's somebody. the hey, you look so good. Like, yeah, they, maybe that's not what they want to hear. So. I'm very glad I was spared that sort of thing. <laughs> I was a little heartbroken that like he was so close to you. Yeah. So close to you. He's also been in my hometown a lot for some reason. Really? He's yeah, he's stayed uh at, yeah, I don't know. He when we were doing Affleck week, he was staying in uh Belmont, Massachusetts where I'm from. Okay. Yeah. Weird. Uh well that was because of um was that Tender Bar? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. And I remember that uh that summer, somebody was like, hey, uh, they're shooting a movie near me. And I walked down and I talked to uh, George Clooney. Yeah. And he was so nice. And uh, Ben Affleck seemed like really standoffish. And I, I've i never defended somebody I've never met to a stranger 
who was being very nice otherwise, more than I did there. I was like, oh my God, really? He was being stand like who knows what that guy was feeling in that moment? Who knows yeah. how working makes him feel right now? Like, ugh. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, but the news here, he's doing a Dunkin' Donuts commercial. Yes, probably for the Super Bowl, I think people are saying. Yeah. I wonder if they have to shoot it so close to it because they're like, the the buzz will wear off because it's going to become a story that they're yeah, right. doing it if they do it two months before. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just like... <clears throat> The, the the fact that you could have had just like a chance encounter with Ben Affleck would have been the best story. Also, J Lo was there. Yeah, I don't. Care. So that's all. No, but that's also why I'm glad because I, that that would have thrown me too. I would have just been so caught off guard. And I, I I I I promise you that if I saw them two, I wouldn't pay a single lick of attention to jennifer lopez oh nice so you'd be the person that meets a couple out in public you shake the yes. the man's hand ignore the the woman yeah it's very what's your name uh uh uh, uh j what's i would be like hey uh you're i'm super proud of you and uh i loved marry me <laughs> and that would be it that would be that would be a good way to approach it. If what if we I was met them listening to the "Marry Me" soundtrack <laughs> in the car as I rolled up to the Dunks drive-through? That would be a great way to approach it. If we ever saw them out in public, you can take J Lo and be like, "I love Marry Me," and I'll be like, "I love everything you do, Ben." <laughs> I'd be like, "Hey, Ben, look, I'm proud of you. Uh, the video is rolling. Can you just say uh, is suckmydick.com <laughs> for me, please? Put it on your head. Do we even have that anymore?" I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. That sounds awesome, Sonny. What am I, a jerk? Brunch! Hit it, boy! Yeah, I, I wish my band had a seat. You've just driven into Fuckville. Nope. I hate to say it, I hope and I don't... she's the mayor! Put some on your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your tongue would slap your brains out trying to get to it. <laughs> you ever... You think that... You, th you think if you drop that... That line? If you drop... Drop it off. <laughs> you think if you drop... That that drop that line? Ben Affleck would know what you were talking about. No, no chance. Zero no. chance. He'd be probably be like, that's be, so rude. He'd be like, and then you'd explain it to him. He'd be like, you're one of the three people that saw Geely. Yeah. And then I'd be like, hey, don't say that, man. <laughs> and then people would be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to watch Geely. I'd be like, don't watch Geely. You're going to cancel so many people if you see that movie. Don't watch it. But just respect that. I don't know. There is nothing to respect in that movie. No. Like that, that movie is bad. Bad news. Bad, 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 bad. bad Just bad. don't watch that. That that movie. I uh, guess we should start talking about movies, huh? Yeah, we have to start with. Uh, we have to start with Tar. Okay. Okay. Tar, written and directed by Todd Field and starring Kate Blanchett, follows the unraveling of conductor Lydia Tar, leading up to a live recording with the Berlin Philharmonic. Lydia falls into familiar patterns and fends off past ghosts while trying to maintain her relationships and public image. Ooh. Decent little it's Nazi a good synopsis. There. It's, it's a little wordy. A little it's, wordy? This is, this is a very simple uh, synopsis. How would it's, you do it? It's about a conductor that gets canceled. She better get canceled. <laughs> she, it, it, she does. Boy, she has it coming. <laughs> she, she does. This one is a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes with a 72 audience score. Uh, the large conversation that will probably be had with the movie Tar is Kate Blanchett mm -hmm. because this whole movie kind of revolves around the performance of Kate Blanchett and the character of Lydia Tar. As it should. Yes, she is awesome in it. Uh, this is a long movie. Mm -hmm. It's 158 minutes, and it reminds me Two of... hours and 37, if you're keeping track. You're mm. not good at conversions. I don't know if uh, it would go from 158 to 237, the two hours and 37 minutes. Do you lose a minute when you... <laughs> uh, when you... Yes. Push it? Yeah, it's it's uh, inflation. No, it's... Uh, shit, what's the thing where... It's the... Uh, ah, angel share <laughs> do you know what that is that's ah, the angel share <laughs> you, you lose a minute i see angel minute yeah so that's tar um <laughs> but uh this movie reminds me of a movie that isn't long and 
doesn't have a similar story to this, okay. but you'll get why it reminds me okay, of it. Okay, let's hear it. It reminds me of Nomadland, where... It doesn't remind me of that, because I still haven't seen you it. You never saw Nomadland? Never saw it, no. Okay, that movie I felt was made so Francis McDormand could flex for a little bit. Okay. Which, uh, by that point, I was very well aware of yeah. what she could do we don't need to to like have a kate blanchett uh dis like display or right. showcase so no so i'll say like in the case of nomadland i was like oh we already know i would take a better movie than just something where it's like hey look at this awesome actor go off to but also in the case of yeah this, what, i was as, gonna say what are you talking about like kate blanchett was like the the multi nominee last year, right? So I'm yeah, 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 yes, but I'm 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 in the case of Nomadland. I'm like, did you really need to make this movie? I think that Kate Blanchett could stand to have a seminal. She owned this best actress sort of movie, okay. whereas you'd gotten that before with um with McDormand. Yeah, this is her version of that. I don't know if it's a great movie. It's a great performance though and a great character. So my my like takeaway is that I think that this is a very good movie that it's just not for me. It's it's a very good movie that I I can find f issues with and I didn't particularly enjoy it. And it feels weird to say that, but there are a lot of things to appreciate about this movie. Number 1 being Kate Blanchett's performance, but like tech in like all technical categories, this movie is awesome. Mm -hmm. But um it's 2 hours and 38 minutes, 37 Some with Angel would say, yeah. yeah. Um it feels like it could be at least 20 minutes shorter and the 20 minutes that I would cut off at least 20 minutes completely this movie sucking its own dick like this movie fillets itself like crazy how so uh it is just like so the my my biggest complaint about this movie is that it takes about an hour and 10 minutes for something important to happen mm -hmm. and the hour and 10 minutes at the front is not not important but you don't know why it's important until you get to to like when something important happens or to the end. Yes. There are so many things that happen in this movie that seem like they're happening for no particular reason until you get to the end. And I guess you can make the case like that, it, that they're still serving a purpose, which they are in the end. But if you're, if you're watching on first viewing, you're going to have, or at least I had a hard time being like, what is the point of this? What are we doing? Yes, the, the, there is a massive what is the point of this? And it's just real. It's character development and character development right. and character development. And, and and they do a good, they honestly do a good job of, of character development. Yes, yeah. Because Lydia Tarr is a great character. And the world that they build, which is a world that I'm not particularly interested in, like uh, uh, classical music and orchestra and stuff, I'm not particularly interested in any of that. But it was like pretty interesting to me to watch how that world sort of operates. Yeah, I mean, basically, it, you could use the 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 orchestra is the White House in House of Cards or whatever. Like mm -hmm, it, it, mm -hmm. you're just taking Frank Underwood and you're getting in the weeds. Them, yeah, right. And that that that's who this character reminded me of, Frank Underwood. Where it's like this is somebody who's probably shaken enough hands but has stabbed so many people in the back or screwed so many people over. Uh, this person, very, very big uh, Lydia Tarr on sexual favors, <laughs> yeah. just really strips her way it's, from first chair to, to kingdom come. So I I think that I think that Lydia Tarr and Frank Underwood is somewhat of an unfair comparison because I do think that there's more humanity. Less murder from Lydia <laughs> yeah. Tarr. Yeah, like I think... Ah, actually. <laughs> it's, I think it's less black and white. Yeah. Uh, it, it's less black and white. I think Lydia Tarr is a is a somewhat sympathetic character at times, but you do recognize that like all of her all of her relationships are very transactional. She is very like hyper focused on her career, the one thing that she cares the most about. And like if you're not serving that purpose, you can get the fuck out. Yeah. And that can be very off-putting in terms of like a, a like a character and and morality standpoint there are there are sympathetic 
tendencies, I think, though. I the Two things I really liked about this movie, uh, other than Kate Blanchett's performance, uh, Mark Strong was very good in it, which he's they did him going fucking to be. dirty, though. They, yeah, look they how gave they, him look hair. How they massacred my boy. They gave him hair and made him uglier, which yeah. to anybody who I know that people could be self conscious about losing their hair and everything, rubbish with that. Well, look it, no further than Mark Strong. Yeah, but you, you have to have the right skull. Yeah. Mark Strong has the right skull got to be that bald. Head, boy. Him and Stanley Tucci, both very bald, very sexy men. Right, right. Very good. Uh, yeah, they they ugly him up a bit, but he's very good in it. Uh, the other thing that I just th- I think is great, like the final 40 minutes of this movie. Yeah, when once you finally re- once unravel, you, once you you're re- like, oh, I am in. Once you realize what the point is, yeah. y- you're like, okay, hell yeah. Like, is anybody going to come for her at some point? Mm-hmm. And everything comes for her uh, all at once. Pretty quickly, yeah. Yeah, uh, I will say, just a little nitpick a video floats around that uh, gets her in trouble that would and it that is would, the choppiest most clearly edited video that would never pick up steam like not, never pick up steam not in a million years no. and especially not, not to uh besmirch uh my, my my musician friends but like if that were going around people would be like and this is a conduct. What? Who is this? What? Yeah, yeah, right. Why do I care? Why am I upset? This person's young. How many people on it TikTok? It seems like they're all how many doing people, music stuff with each how other. How many people on TikTok are gonna be like, "Ooh, this famous composer did something controversial." But I will say the um the Juilliard scene yes. is an incredible scene, and it's great because it's kind of a fake out because it makes you think, okay, so this is the good guy here, mm-hmm. and. Oh, nice. This is she's dealing with a student who is uh, maybe leaning too far into identity He's politics. Very woke. Yes, right. And he says he doesn't like Bach because uh, nailed it. I'm always so afraid to say that name uh, because uh, that he had a million kids and uh, it, he eventually says, "Look, I'm sorry. I just don't like cis white composers." Mm-hmm. And she, the, I wrote down. I wrote down one of the lines that she said. So uh, did I. Don't be so eager to be offended. The narcissism of small differences leads to the most boring conformity. That is a fucking bar. Yeah, and that you're is, like, okay, I'm on board with, the, with that, this character. That, that is that is like the 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 first thing that I was like, oh shit, this movie has got has got it. It was um, also though a little. Um, did you watch the newsroom? Yeah, you it know, like that it, first it, scene it, that I yeah, loved? it definitely it definitely had a bit of like. They know this is a bar, right? Yeah, and, like, it, and it was like delivered to be a bar. Yes. So that, so yeah, that, right. I I, I do little, agree with you. Little grain of but, salt. Great line though. But great line. Uh, the her stance on identity politics in that in that scene is so good. Yes, and then you continue to watch, and you're like, all right, a little a little trouble there, a little bending <laughs> the rules there. Stealing uh, her wife's medication. And- oh, <laughs> all right. Probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, that person's died, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when things come for her finally in the last 40 minutes, it's great. And you leave it being like, wow, like, what a performance and what a story. And then, But then you kind of snap out of it and you're like, how was it given to me, though? Was it yeah. just one good performance mm-hmm. and... A nice ending because I don't love how it was given to me. Yeah, I really don't. I I don't love how it was given to me. Um, like I said, I think that this is a movie um, that I will appreciate more on a second watch, knowing where everything is going and what the purpose of it is. But it's two hours and thirty seven minutes, and you spend over an hour being like, "Where are we going? Why am I here?" When they play. You have the a clips from you, this at the Oscars, though. People are going to yes. be like, "What is this movie?" And how do I see it as soon as possible? It starts out with a like a twelve minute, uh, like sit down New Yorker interview. Yeah, and it's that. So that's what I mean by it, like it fillets itself too much. It's it it's sort of like the James Cameron thing where it's like you're gonna be interested in this and you're gonna see it again. It's. I don't I don't like that. I want you to convince me that this is a good movie. All right. And, and you have a lot of goodwill. You have a lot of making up to do if you make me waste an hour and spend an hour wondering why I'm watching this movie. Uh, you mentioned Kate Blanchett busy last year, of course, Nightmare Alley and Don't Look Up. She uh, currently has the name of the uh, Octavia Spencer uh, award, Michael Stuhlbarg award for being busy. 
one year. This year, who are we saying is a candidate for that? Oh, yeah, basically like everybody who is in the Batman. Paul Dano, Barry oh, Keoghan, right. yeah. uh, Colin Farrell. Uh, she gets a. She definitely gets a best uh, actress nomination. Yes, and 1, you'll be happy. You'll be fine if she wins. Very happy if she wins. Totally agree. Uh, what do you get this on Letterboxd? Uh, let me check. Um, I, I want to make sure that I, that I get it right. Uh, I'll give it in the activity? meantime. Uh, I had a tough time because if oh, you could give here. three and three quarters. Mm-hmm. of a star yeah, so that's, that's what i would give you. god damn it so i gave it i gave it three and a half at first and then i bumped it up to four because i i assume that i'm gonna re-watch it in the near future and i think it's gonna be a four the second time that i watch it but i initially landed three and a half that's a pro move so i gave it a three and a half and i stayed there but you're right when we rewatch these i will get all in my feels about uh the performance i, I I'm I'm okay giving it a four right now before the rewatch just because of how much I liked the Lydia Tarr character. Yeah. And it's, again, like, it's a great character. It's a great world that they built for the viewer. I just don't love how they made you live in it. Shout out the fashion as well. Loved Lydia's clothes. All, uh, the, all the technical categories lot are of, so good. A lot of, like, androgynous stuff mm. and... A lot of like, oh, I can make that fit happen, and and, and, I'm going to make and that fit sort happen. of like the the regression in how much she takes care of herself oh, as yeah. her life unfolds, yeah, um, and kind of unravels. She's a slopposaurus at the end, yeah, and and like is extremely sort of um, like taken care of at the beginning. Mm. So uh, I like how they do that. The character devel- development is so good. All right, that is that is Tar. Are you ready to do? That thing that's driving everybody wild. The whole nation's talking about this one. You ready for this movie? I am. All right. Let's talk about Megan. In Gerard Johnstone's Megan, a 30-something roboticist named Gemma gives a human-like robot named Megan to her orphaned niece, Katie. Though Gemma's initial intent is to impress her bosses and help Katie cope with the tragic loss of her parents, things turn deadly when Megan takes protecting her owner to a sinister level. It's a good synopsis. It is a good synopsis. That's a really good synopsis, good actually. Synopsis. That was better than, uh, I think it, that was better than the Tar one. It was definitely better than Tar, yeah. It was... Uh, I had to get sinister in there. <laughs> you know, you know, you know it's a good one when you work the word sinister in. Uh, Megan, I sinister, did... Sinister, fuck, I could have used sinister in Tar. You can use sinister in pretty much every movie if you the really want to. sinister Lydia Tar but tries you... to chase away the ghosts of this. <laughs> I think that you should save you should save the impact of sinister for when it's deserved. So, uh, if you've watched the, these reviews on YouTube, uh, by the way, check out our YouTube channel. Yes, we're polishing them up real good, and also patreoncom slash listen to brunch. We're polishing them up real good. I think if if sinister is in a synopsis. It means it like it's it will hold weight significance. Yes. Maybe we'll have some sort of like sound effect we can put in there. Oh, Not oops. that one. No, nope. <laughs> that's very sinister. Drop it. We uh, should just uh like um sort of lower Lou Bega's ah and make it very like oh, oh, like sinister. I can do that. Whoa. <laughs> this movie is a ninety four on Rotten Tomatoes. Fucking bananas with an eighty <laughs> audience score. Um. Both of those are wait, high for me. Say the number. 94 oh Rotten Tomatoes. God. Critics, 94, 80% audience score. We have a light agreement that we typically don't shoot our wads when we see movies and put yeah. reviews out on Twitter. Uh, I just couldn't wait, though. It was like maybe two, three days ago I saw the movie, and I was just like going like this when I saw that it was a 90 Rotten Tomatoes, and uh, I ended up tweeting the thing with like, the screen grab of the review thing, and I have so many words for so many critics. Yeah, ninety four. Ninety four percent of them thought, yeah, yeah. That's that's crazy to me. That especially with a horror movie, like horror movies typically mm. have um, a big brunch score because uh, horror movies, horror movie fans love horror movies. Yes. Would you call this horror? It's more of like a psychological thriller. Thr- yeah, thr- thriller is what it tries to be. We'll get to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, either way, both of those scores are stunning. I guess the, the audience score is less stunning, but it's crazy to me that audiences liked it less than critics. I did not love 
this movie. I'll I, tell you what, though. Uh, this was the most packed theater experience that I've had in years. I'm so glad that you said that because I saw this movie and was talking to a friend who saw it and they loved it. I did not love it. And they were stunned. They said, wow, like you really, you weren't like, wait, wait, wait tell me about your theater. And I said, uh, a third full Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. He said, that might be the problem. He said that his theater experience was a party. It was full. Yeah. Everybody was hooting and hollering. Yeah. Same. Just like really into it. So did it, it, it enhanced the experience. Like it had it, to have. It, it definitely enhanced the experience. Like there were a lot of laughs, a lot of like, a lot of hooting and hollering as, as said. And like, if I had watched this movie at home, I would have came away being like, that was fucking stupid as hell. Uh, and being in the theater, it's sort of like your John Wick experience. We're like, okay, yes. people are here for the party. They're kind of in on the joke. Uh, we're here to have a good time and, and acknowledge that some of this is ridiculous and over the top. To fill listeners in, I saw John Wick by myself. John Wick 2. Uh, no, yeah, John yeah, Wick okay, by sorry. myself at home before going to a screening of John Wick 2. And while watching it by myself with nobody else laughing and sitting around or anything, I totally missed the joke of it. And then I went to see John Wick 2. It's not fully a joke. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah it, the, 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 just that it's tongue in cheek. And then when I went to see John Wick 2, uh, they everybody laughed at like the first line. And I was like, oh, this is supposed to be, I get it. And I like it. Mm -hmm. So, but I wondered as I wasn't finding anything too funny or too thrilling or anything, I was like, is this just that nobody's kind of goose in it for me. Mm -hmm. And what I came away with was Blumhouse movies can be scary. They can be campy. They can be funny and they can be a little thrilling, a little daring. And this movie going in, I thought was a boring plot. The killer robot thing. We all know exactly where it's going to go. Right. Everything ended up being just as telegraphed as it's, I feared it would it's be. It's exactly the movie that you think it is. It, that's it. And there were some like kind of cutesy moments and I got a couple of laughs out of it, but a lot of its intended laughs didn't make me laugh. And the big thing is it's, if you're going to be a stupid movie, be like, uh, be like happy death day, which is like, okay, we're going to be a stupid slasher movie, which means we're going to be a slasher movie and we are going to be fucking stupid. Yeah. This movie wasn't stupid enough or mm -hmm. campy enough for me to feel all right, it knows what it's doing. Yeah, it it didn't do anything particularly well. That's um, that's in a nutshell. And it, it a lot of the a lot of the laughs that were gotten were were like visual gags, and they they replayed that like they replay that a bunch of times. The visual gags with like how ridiculous it is to have Megan in like this this scene or like in this uh, like setting or whatever, and they just kind of like push that button over and over and over again. And it does make like some social commentaries about like how, how much like we're invested in the internet and in our screens and stuff, but like nothing, nothing super smart. Like it's not as particularly smart movie. It's not a particularly innovative movie. Again, like you know exactly how it's going to play out and exactly like sort of the notes that they're going to hit. And even, even like the developments of Megan turning sinister mm. are not that interesting or not that like a appealing on screen. The one thing I can respect though in that nature uh, as far as commentary goes is that I can appreciate what it was saying about how stupidly or dangerously stupid really smart people can yes. be, which is something that we're learning as technology becomes more and more king. Like I thought the Gemma character was hilarious like i loved i i thought it was very funny and terrible obviously that this girl's sister dies and the first thing she does is give her sister's kid her sister's orphaned kid who has no friends no family a murder robot <laughs> well, like i was imagining i was imagining i mean i i i like the that. mom like watching for all this from heaven being like all right well all right, Gemma got Katie. That's good. At least 
What's that? <laughs> That's not what you do. You don't immediately. No, 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 no. We never gave her a murder robot. Well, it's it's not even a ju- she, not only she just gave her a murder robot. She gave her a murder robot so that she didn't have to pay attention to her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like ooh, this will make my job so much easier. I like that they at least acknowledge that though. That like Gemma is not a parent, isn't fit to be a parent, doesn't want to be a parent, likes the kid. But again, a little after sun vibes here, where it's like, yeah, sure, love the kid, but. Uh, who knows how good ah, you don't really want me right here. Take a murder robot. I think that the biggest thing, my biggest takeaway of like the way that this movie unfolded and my biggest issue with it is that like the AI goes bad because it's taught to protect uh, the girl at all costs. But like half the thing like th- that, it starts off that way as like the, the robot is kind of going over the line to protect the girl. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere that stops being the motivation. It just like enjoys murder. Right, right, right. It just, it wants to be Chucky. Yes. And And like that's, that's that I took issue with that because it, it loses sight of like what the message was supposed to be or something. And the murders are like stupid. And, uh, there's actually, that's what I'm saying. Like the on-screen development of her being sinister is not that interesting. Uh, I will say the scene. We all know the scene. Everybody's seen it in the trailers of the dancing down the hall yeah. with the blade and everything. Like that ended up being that was I, interesting. Yeah, that ended up <laughs> still being like the good part of the movie. Which, again, going in, I kind of figured that would be. I'm like, okay, we're gonna see this thing do like TikTok dances mm-hmm. and then kill somebody. Following that scene though in the elevator yeah. cringe hall of fame yeah 100%. with just how obvious and overdone the thing of oh i'm gonna make it look like you killed this person and then you couldn't cope with blah blah but like there are just so many things that you've seen in a million movies before and again none of that makes sense because none of it relates back to the her primary user right right none of it relates at all like those two people in the elevator have no no tie right to, to the to the main character or like the the main yeah per- katie yeah right and i'll say they do nothing with katie was in it, like at one point katie grows really really fixated uh on and yeah, I attached say they do to nothing with her but right like like it gets to that point but they just kind of skip ahead to it though yeah and once she has this like outburst and i was like jesus fucking like finally we got something out of this kid like why'd they even hire somebody they should have gotten another megan to just play this character because they do nothing with this character uh speaking of characters kind of small cast for a blumhouse movie you notice that this is really just sort like sort of allison I, williams's show yeah but like i i don't think that blumhouse really like they generally do like an ensemble they're like hey they're playing a game and then there's like five people and they all fall off one by one yeah yeah i mean that that's that's definitely the case but like i just went truth or dare on your ass yeah but like in that so that's when Blumhouse is good because like <laughs> you're like, oh, you're talking about good Blumhouse movies. Yeah, because like th- like that's when you're like rooting for people to get killed off. There's nobody to like root for getting killed off in this movie. No, no. Uh, and that's why like there's not there's not a whole lot of murder that happens in here, but like every person that's murdered, you're like, wait, why? Why were they killed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That uh, is Allison a good robot assist or a bad one? Uh, good I, th- I think that her intentions were good a little, little shoddy and, a little sloppy and and definitely sloppy and there was there i mean her sister did just die hard to uh maybe i don't know if that's why she overlooked putting the parental filter it thing on it though it didn't really seem like she cared that yeah she was not rattled by it at all not, she was just she like was a, not rattled by her sister being killed yeah and somebody was like hey how close were you and your sister and she was like hmm, you know <laughs> i don't know some real brewery brothers vibes saw her at holidays sometimes y- um yeah. no but yeah i mean like i don't know I, the there was really like no motivations in in this movie i i doubt that Megan, I think that she was a good robot assist, though, because like she's good at her job, good at the technical aspects. Yeah. Had good intentions, knew when things were going wrong and tried to pull the plug. Yes. But just wasn't in the cards. It was I mean, that that Megan grew to be a tough cookie. That's right. Quite sinister that uh, Megan. What do you give it on Letterboxd? I gave it uh, three stars on Letterboxd. I think 
there is a potential for it to to drop down to two and a half. It's in between two and a half to to three for me. Wow, matchy matchy again. I gave it three, and I was really getting my. I was like sitting in that theater, being like, "Just you fucking boy." As soon as I get out here, I'm giving this two and a half on litter box. I was really like, "Yeah, feeling ready." I did, I did and then the, same the thing. end has like a twist that you were like, "I know, I was <laughs> watching the movie." Like, what'd you think of the twist? That's it. This movie has no twists, and then it tries to act like. I don't know, so, this could kind of be a twist. So, like, I, I wanted to give it two and a half, and I ended up giving it three, um, just because it was exactly what I expected. So, like, I have a hard time. I have a hard time, like, most of my letterbox scores... It didn't and, fail and, to be what you right, thought it was exactly. going to be. Yeah. Like, it, most of my letterbox scores are based on my expectation of the movie heading in. And I did not have high expectations for this movie. And I don't think that it, like, failed me. It entertained me for less than two hours. And, like, am I going to tell people to go watch it? No. But if they're going to be like, should I watch this movie? I'm I'm, I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to say, no, don't waste your time. Because if they're asking me to, uh, if they should watch that movie, it's probably exactly what they want to watch. I That's a good point. And I wouldn't tell somebody to not watch this movie. I mean, hell, do it. Just so you know what the heck everybody's talking about, because this movie killed it in the box office. Very small yeah. budget, made like fifty million dollars, the highest grossing movie ever. Uh, so <laughs> doing uh, suck really, it, James Cameron. <laughs> oh my god, that would be the best. Is it too late to reverse course and be like, everybody go see Megan? <laughs> let's put let's put that Cameron guy in his place. Uh, Jaws was on TV the other day. Cool. I watched it. You know who? Do you know who directed Jaws? Yeah, n- uh, not Steven Spielberg. Steven until Spielberg Steel- from um, the Fablemans. That's right. <laughs> Old uh, Sammy Fableman himself. That's right. Yeah. Um, I will say, Allison Williams. Yeah. Very good in this movie. Yeah. I, I, good actress. Somebody hit me up and was like, "Oh, oh," because I was like, uh, I did not like Megan. And somebody was like, "Oh, that's the one with that nepo baby, right?" <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask that. I was like, "How is this? Allison Williams escaped the the nepo baby?" Oh, narrative? Allison Williams ain't escaped shit, dude. She's always been given so much guff. I mean, she is like the classic. Like, if there's anybody to be like, "Ooh, classic nepo baby," but she's a good actress. Yeah, well, they're like, oh, she kind of skipped the line. I would say, sure. Sure, but she is also a gorgeous, good actor. So I, she, we know how this works. She did skip the line. Mm-hmm. She got there beca- in part because of her name, but she's also somebody who I think should be an actor. Definitely. Like and, I and, want, I want yeah. her in my Blumhouse movies. And, and I would say honestly, like it seems like not her the- best Blumhouse movie, by the way. Uh, oh yes, correct. Uh, Famously, was in a better get room. out. Was, I, it's unbelievable that, that was a Blumhouse movie. Looking back on it, um, I will say, like, it does seem like she's kind of gotten pushed back in the line over the past she's couple been of kind years. Of quiet. She's yeah. been. She's definitely been quiet, and I don't know what the reason for that is. But she had. She was hot shit after Get Out, and she was really good in Get Out. And yeah. but even when she made Get Out, it it, it had been kind of. A minute since Girls, and it was like, all right, if she's going to make her move, when's she doing it? Right. And then you see her in Get Out. She did the Peter Pan thing after got, Get Out. I mean, she got crushed for that. Yeah. And yeah, I don't, I, I don't know why I'm defensive of Allison Williams. I'm sure she's doing well, fine because, in because, life. but people, Because she's know, doing people, good work, and like people are shitting on her for seemingly uh, relatively unfair reasons. Yeah. I said that... Uh, we can't crush Nepo babies because my son, bitch boy Dave, is uh, going to be a a star in the podcast world. You hear about Dylan's kid? No. Uh, well, Dil- I know. I've heard about him once or twice, but not He's seven. recently. Yeah. Uh, he took, Dylan took his kid uh, mini golfing with his son's, uh, let's say, lady friend. Okay. And Parks. At seven? Yeah. Damn. I mean, he's got that haircut. I mean, he's... he's You've he's, been keeping up with it? They, they don't let him get the haircut. He's a handsome chap. So, he is... I mean, it runs in the family. Yeah. Sinks a putt. Sack taps Dylan. <laughs> sack taps his dad right in his face in front of his 
lady friend. Okay. Boy. <laughs> that kid. Fucking power move. That, yeah, that kid is a problem. Alpha man. Yeah, yes. <laughs> like, the, that man. Like, he, you know you've arrived <laughs> when you are seven. That kid Se- is top G. Yeah, like, wow. What a legend. And I feel bad. I was listening to the podcast and Dylan was saying, he was like, what do I do about this? And Will and Dave were just both like, look, we're really happy it happened. Let's move on. <laughs> Did he hit him with a D's nuts afterwards? Uh, yeah, it's because he's also got that club in his <laughs> right. bag to stay with this the golf kid is, conversation. This kid is, is, la- is racking up a Hall of Fame resume. I mean, I don't know how you can be old. related to Dylan and be the coolest person in your family. <laughs> like, do you know, Dylan is so cool. And it's just all effortless with him. I'm his, uh, what is it? Uh, You're his muse. No, is uh, well, yes, but what's, uh, what do we call it? The something king? Uh, the, uh, fuck. Uh, like appreciation king? We can't put oh, the term. Oh, uh, praise, praise king. I'm his praise king. Yeah, it's praise king, yeah. But damn. Park's a cool ass kid. That kid's a problem, man. All right. Next week on the podcast, we have Park Chevery. Yeah, we'll get uh, Parks. Uh, also, new thing we're going to do on the uh, Patreon. Been noticing a lot of a lot of times you'll see places post like memes that are all off one similar thing. Mm-hmm. So on the Patreon, we'll do a post each week for it. You pick a theme for the meme and on the Instagram we will post like a slideshow of like five, ten memes we make off this one thing. So for so example, are they picking the image or are they picking like the like the theme? Just the theme? If you want to send us an image too, you can do that. And we could try to get like ten things out of one image, but I would just say like Ben Affleck. We'll just post we'll make ten Ben Affleck memes. Okay. Or uh like whatever podcast shoes who make 10 pe- podcast shoe memes actually we might that's, to, that should be the first we might wet sure. the whistle with uh yeah like podcast sh- show your work yeah and, and let's 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 establish a, a precedent with pot with a uh, podcast shoes this week also if you want to just make any like podcast shoe content or art you can send that uh, our way. I have tweeted a picture before the recording of this episode of the old podcast kinda, shoes. Kind of did well on on, uh, did on the Twitter. Yeah, really. I mean, like I checked. I, I got like a a notification on my phone because I didn't know you got that you the posted one of your it. tweets is doing something. Yeah, I don't get those. I mean, it got twenty four likes. Ooh, Pretty good on that Sutherland shit. Oh my goodness, that tweet is a problem. 